I realized as an adult that I was having a lot of frustration issues. I was very nervous. I was always a very scared person until one day while writing and photographing for the university paper, I went out and started taking photographs and I realized that the images that I started taking, I was somehow able to see a reflection of my emotions. And I realized that this tension that I had inbuilt as a result of having lived for a period of time during a dictatorship in Chile, because I remember as a child, you know, having we had soldiers coming into our house, you know, my teachers were killed. I found that this ability to photograph became my own counselor. My first Fuji camera, you know, I was there with a X-Pro1 and, uh, and, and then I bought the X-T1, I remember. And uh, one of the things that was really surreal is that uh, in Latin America, most in Chile, they don't particularly like local media because they find that they, they don't often say the reality what's going on in the streets. I was in the middle of this huge demo and there was fighting, tear gas, water cannons, rocks being thrown. And uh, I remember one stage, this particular guy all covered in balaclava, throwing rocks and he looked at me, he said to me in Spanish, prensa or media, and he was about to throw the rock at me. And uh, what's, what was really surreal, he looked at my camera and he said to me, oh, but you're an alternative media and he just let me go. He did not disturb me, no one else disturbed me after that because they didn't see me as being a main street media person, which is they are uh, fearful of not, you know, saying the truth. As an alternative, they found that I was an alternative voice as well. You know, and, and I find that photographically, you know, I, I've always seemed to follow the trend. When the a Premier of Melbourne it was decided to lock down Housing Commission flats, I just rushed to cover these flats. And when I got there, there were police everywhere, in every entry. How do you cover this story? There, there are police and people trying to leave, and I did all of that. I'm not interested anymore in photographing the empty streets from a, from a news point of view. I don't see the empty street. I see a sad street. I see this emotional attachment to it. I'm looking at this building there is, and I see sadness. I see emptiness, but I also see anger. Part of my cover story has been and will be to continue to go to the cemetery until I can find the image or images that will join the rest of this story. I love the sense of movement that I see of people rushing through the cemetery. Almost like a blur where everything else is precise, steady, still. Just humans are the ones that are moving fast because of this fear that we have towards life and more so death, I suppose, and COVID nowadays. During this lockdown, I've been photographing my family using the Acres film simulation on the new Fuji XS10. It's been very interesting to, to do so, because um, usually when I'm at home, I like to hang the cameras, you know, and, uh, but uh, I suppose with this lockdown, it's, it's giving me purpose. I need to have a purpose to photograph. I'm not the kind of person who just photographs wildly. I need to have a, a purpose. I need to have an idea that I'm trying to convey. I find that I, that I, you know, my tension begins to build. You know, I get more tense when I'm not photographing. Even, even when I'm, I'm supposed to take a holiday, I just can't. I, I, I gotta grab my cameras. I remember a long time ago, and my wife and I we were on holidays in, in Thailand. We were in, the, in Koh Samui. This is 1998. I was watching the news, and then I realized there were 10 million people displaced in Bangladesh because of the monsoon and the floods. 
I just said to my wife, I'm sorry, I, I just got to go to Bangladesh. <laughs> and I just left, you know, and, uh, but we've always had this wonderful relationship that she knows that that's what I'm going to do. For me, life is about layers, emotional layers. Thank you.